A Libertarian Walks Into a Bear. This is the title of a 2020 book published by Matthew Hetling. The book examines events that took place in a town called Grafton, New Hampshire. In 2004, a group from the Free State Project decided to turn this town into the freest town in America. Critics like Hetling claim that this is a failure of libertarianism, that the town thoroughly debunks any idea of a libertarian society actually working. So today I want to take a closer look at this little town and see if it truly was a failure, and if there were failures, how we can improve on these things. As is self-explanatory in the title of the book, one of the main criticisms levied against Grafton is the bear problem. These critics point out that Grafton experienced an uptick in bear activity, even including bears attacking people. This is blamed on several different things, such as people not taking care of their trash, and a particular old lady feeding bears. But is this really a good criticism? Between 1998 and 2013, the number of bears doubled in the wildlife management region that includes Grafton. New Hampshire actually has a history of bear problems. Back in the 1700s, bears posed a significant threat to public safety. Lawmakers even issued bounties for anyone that turned in a bear's head with both ears on. And this was in place for over 200 years. In 2012, a woman in Grafton was attacked and almost killed by a bear. In 2018, it was a woman in Groton. She experienced severe injuries on her head and torso. And then in 2020, in Canaan, the third bear attack in New Hampshire in eight years. The point here is that clearly this bear problem was not confined to Grafton. There was already a rise in bear activity statewide. In 1990, the New Hampshire Fish and Game opened up most of the state to bear hunting for the first time in decades. They sold tens of thousands of bear hunting permits. There were nearly 1,500 bears killed between 2003 and 2014 alone. But the bears outbred this. They achieved an all-time population high of 4,830 in 2005. Because of this, the fish and game lengthened the hunting season. But again, between 2006 and 2013, the numbers rose by another 1,100. Fish and game receives an average of 600 bear complaints per year. When Grafton experienced their bear problem, they tried to go to the New Hampshire fish and game officials for help. They were reminded that killing bears without a license is illegal. So we have two main points here. Number one, this bear problem was statewide. Number two, the citizens in this town were still subject to state laws and were unable to kill bears. So I don't really see how this is a failure of libertarianism. And thus, the bear problem is a non sequitur. Free staters. On the tail end of a party in America's freest town. And I'm standing here with Jerry, who's a free stater who moved here to Grafton in uh, what year? Just last year, in August. Oh, okay. <laughs> and when you got here, uh, you said the house was just, uh, you kind of had to rescue it. Well, it was pretty well trashed. Full of garbage and all sorts of trash and rotted out and falling in. So. so what did you guys have to do? Well, we took about two dumpster loads of trash out. We had to fix the roof, keep the rain out. And the floor where it rotted away, reset the doors where they'd fallen in. In his book, Matthew Hetling noted that recycling rates dropped from 60% to 40%. The number of annual sex offender registrations reported by police increased from 8 in 2006 to 22 in 2010. The number of police calls went up by more than 200 per year. So what exactly went wrong? Crime statewide was on a decline since the 90s until 2006 and 2007, when most types of crime began to increase. With higher crime overall in the state, it was inevitable that criminals would begin to exploit one of the fatal flaws of Grafton. That being the ways they went about handling public services. You see, the Free State Project members did not simply take over the town government. They just used their voting influence to affect the budget issues. Rather than a traditional libertarian privatization, they simply cut down government services, with no real replacement. And this is exactly where it went wrong. A bunch of progressive Ayn Rand reading libertarians aren't exactly going to do a good job. You still need some way to curb crime. The police should have been privatized, not had their funding cut. Cutting down police does tend to increase crime. 
This situation points out that if we want to achieve libertarianism, an anarcho-capitalist system with a libertarian social order is the way to go. Not a progressive open border society in which we let anyone come in and rob us blind. This is why an anarchist town in Italy, full of religious traditionalists, was able to last for 400 years. Meanwhile, a small town in Grafton, New Hampshire, with a small government and budget cuts, encountered problems almost immediately. What ultimately happened is they created a society with too much tolerance. As Hans Hermann Hoppe said, what is ruining our societies morally and economically driving us ever closer to the abyss is not too little tolerance, but too much. Should I be tolerant of the cannibal who wants to eat me? To the communist who wants to expropriate my property? To the socialist who wants to tax away half my earned wealth and income? To the democrat who seeks to disenfranchise me and impoverish me through the ballot? I hardly think so. There, indeed long before that point, my tolerance has an end." End quote. The self-proclaimed libertarians gave tolerance out to anti-capitalists, sex offenders, and drug addicts. And look what it did. If there's a sex offender and he's not in prison, don't let him onto your property. Don't let him into your stores. Completely shun him. If you do these things, ultimately he has no other choice but to physically remove himself. If the people of Grafton would have been able to establish a private police force and court system, and also vet people who came into the town, checked people out before selling them houses and property, this would have gone much better. But not all hope is lost. In recent years, things like crime in Grafton have balanced out. They still require quite a bit of privatization, which might not happen since they still are confined to the rules of the existing state. But still, Grafton has maintained a very good medium income, a below state average unemployment rate, very cheap building permit costs, and better high school graduation rates than the state average. The libertarian citizens still come together to help each other out through charitable means and fix up the town without use of taxpayer money. That's all I got for today. I'll see you guys next time. It's a group of libertarians in Grafton attempting to uh, reclaim this little horse arena without the use of tax dollars. I've been living in this community for about 20 years and uh, I know the kids need something to do uh, in a small town such as this and this is an ideal source of recreation for them and uh, it's a good asset that uh, is lying fallow at the moment and we're going to make it happen. So uh, I'm joining with the other people and see if we can get this place cleaned up and get back in action and the kids can use it for uh, recreation and uh, part of their 4-H project. It's a good learning project. Keep the kids out of trouble and give them something constructive to do.